Welcome to the New York Times In College webcast. I'm Daniel Malvey from Gutman Community College from the City Univers University of New York, sitting in for Kathleen O'Connell. I'm the editor-in-chief of the Fast Times NYC, Gutman's online newspaper. We're pleased to have Christine Hawney with us today. Christine covers the newspaper and magazine industries for the media desk. Her topic is career development. You may ask questions by typing them into the player page on your computer screen. I will read them to Ms. Hawney after her remarks. Gutman Community College students attending in person will also have the opportunity to ask questions. So with that, I will turn it over to Christine. Thank you for having me today. Uh, once again, my name is Christine Hawney. I joined the New York Times in 2006 as a real estate reporter. And um, I, thinking back to my first year in college, I was not a journalism major. I was actually a political science and economics minor, but had not even thought of my major at that point. Um, I always wanted to be a journalist, but I had not um, I had not really done any journalism in those early years um, of university. I took one writing course my first year at Wellesley College, which I loved, uh, one kind of news writing course. And I also kind of tried to take advantage of like mentoring programs that my college had. I mentored a producer from 2020 and tried to see if I wanted to do TV, if I wanted to do print. Uh, then I also, when I did declare my major, I ended up um, trying some political internships, which I, I feel like one great thing about, um, about college is that you can kind of explore all these fields. I always wanted to be a journalist, but I almost kind of was able to rule things out when I was going through like internships and those kind of early years. I also did um, an internship at a documentary film company my first year at Wellesley. Um, and then the political internships I did were um, for a congressman and for an ambassador. So um, coming out of Wellesley, I didn't have clips. I didn't have, I wanted to be a journalist, but I didn't quite know how to kind of get to that next place. I took a job in a consulting firm writing up research reports and um, did that for a year. And then because the consulting firm was known for healthcare, got a job at a little healthcare newsletter. I wrote for, I don't know, 2,000 doctors, that was it. And um, as soon as I had that, they had one kind of trade magazine. I got one clip and I applied to the Washington Business Journal and got my first newspaper job. So that was like thrilling and um, just very exciting to have, start building newspaper clips. Um, but still, I think there's many paths you can take to get into journalism. You can come from like a liberal arts background. You can work on your newspaper and build up many clips. That's another kind of great way to go. Because I didn't have that foundation in journalism that it sounds like you know some of you have, some of you watching this, this broadcast have, I applied to Columbia Journalism School, which was a wonderful program. I also got in, took a year to see if I really needed the degree, because it's a lot of money. All these graduates, I'm sure you're looking, thinking like, this is so much money. Is this worth it? So I got into the program, deferred for a year, and looked for a job without the Columbia name behind me. And then by the end of it was like, OK, this is what I can get kind of without the degree. So I went to Columbia from 98 to 99. And um, I got an internship at the Wall Street Journal afterwards in Atlanta. I did not get hired by the Wall Street Journal at that point. So I went to rural Alabama, and I covered the federal courts for the Mobile Register, um, and did a lot of death row, did a lot of breaking news, um, drug running, you know, gun cases, like, you know, not the delicate stuff. <laughs> so that was wonderful, and it was wonderful to be at a small paper because I got kind of great experience, just um, like writing every day and writing a lot. Um, but my family's in the Northeast, I miss them. So there was an opening to become the Washington Post editorial aide um, in the New York Bureau. That was May of 2000, and um, they said, you can answer the phone, you can get mail, oh, and if the World Trade Center's bombed, you get to cover it. And that was a joke in the job interview. And um, one piece of advice I would give is always be kind of open, because you have no idea what is going to land on your doorstep as a journalist. Um, so I took the job. There was a lot of kind of change. I ended up covering a lot of Al-Qaeda hearings. And I was the first one sent in to cover 9-11 for the Washington Post. 
So I was down at Ground Zero for a couple of years, um, doing a lot of reporting. But after that, I had kind of general news experience. And that w we were in a recession. So it wasn't the easiest to get my next job. Because what was I bringing to the table? Like a lot of general assignment clips. I wasn't bringing like beat expertise. So I spent maybe a year and a half looking for a job while working for The Post. And then in fall of 2003, the editor of Crane's New York Business said, if you can cover buildings falling down, you can cover buildings being built up. Would you like to cover real estate? And another big lesson I learned is real estate was not hot in 2003. Nobody wanted to cover it. It was like a backwater. There was no interest in it in the same way. I took the job, and then real estate kind of exploded. And by 2004, I was coming in um, to interview at the Times. I was hired by the Wall Street Journal in 2005 as a full staff reporter. And by 2006, I was hired by the New York Times. Also, having beat expertise kind of gave me more like bargaining power for salary and opportunities at paper. So I am a big advocate of having like, you want to have something that no one else has. And that was kind of, at that time, it was that I knew every major developer in New York City. Um, so I spent two years on the real estate desk at the New York Times, 06 to 08. In 08, I was hired by the Metro desk to cover um, a beat called Neighborhoods and Transition, because the whole city was changing, as you know. And then um, I covered the recession. I then started a column for the Metro desk called The Appraisal. And then in 2011, I was hired to be the um, transportation reporter. I don't think there had been a female transportation reporter, I don't know if in history, but in any recent history of the New York Times. So, you know, I don't know anything about transportation when I start. Um, I just know I take taxis, I take the subway everywhere. So, and I was coming from having covered real estate for eight years. Um, so, that was kind of another transition. But the way I was able to make it work is by, um, by just kind of building on the sources that I had before. And then from transportation, I was asked to cover the media industry for the Times. So that's kind of a brief summary. Um, and in terms of the media field today, I think it's very exciting. There's like a lot more opportunity than there was when I started out in journalism. And there's a lot of really exciting opportunities for all of you. Because media is not what it was before. As we are talking briefly before this started, it isn't that you have to um, just kind of appear, you know, there are many roads to success in media. When I started at the Times, I remember I started with a colleague who was on the front page ahead of me, and I was like, oh, that would be nice to be on the front page. And um, so I congratulated him, and he's like, wait, you're on most emails. And that was like kind of a new indicator of success. I mean, that's kind of gone by the wayside as well. You also have amazing ways to promote your journalism and promote yourselves that you just didn't have before. Um, I was doing a story a few years ago on how through the recession, um, people were still spending on prom and that prom was a huge deal. So um, I brought it to my editor. My editor's like, you know, great, Christine, but I'm not into prom. You know, Manhattan kids are not into prom. I was like, well, prom is huge if you don't live in Manhattan. So the story was put in a section of the Times, but I had this wonderful editor who's like, let's blow this up on social media. So we released the story after high school girls were released like from their SATs on a Saturday morning. We promoted it on Twitter. We promoted it on Facebook, then got picked up by NPR. It got picked up by MSNBC. So it never got great play in the New York Times but it got like great play everywhere else. And actually, it then kind of drove its own traffic to become the most emailed list. So I just think that there's like a lot of kind of exciting, empowering things happening in media, and that's all very exciting for all of you. So, what's that? Attending today are students from Iowa State University, St. Lawrence University, Bingham Young University, Capital University, Stockton College, Boston Community College, and Romero College of New Jersey, as well as many other colleges around the country. Um, one question is, how competitive is the journalism job market for people just out of college? It's incredibly competitive. Um, and I don't think that has changed, but I think the kind of opportunities to um, 
to develop yourself in media have changed. So it's not just like, okay, there are so many jobs at so many newspapers, because um, a lot of newspapers are declining. You, you know, you're not going to get a newspaper job like you would 10 years ago. But would you want to? Not necessarily. Um, but it's very competitive, but there are ways to get around it, because media is defined so differently. Like you could write for someone who just writes for mobile. You could do television. You could do video for online. So um, yes, it's very competitive, but it's also an exciting time because there's a lot of ways to measure and your success. Another question is, how has the power structure changed with the media and the journalists? The power structure is actually, um, I think it's fascinating. You know, as we were speaking briefly, when I was at the Wall Street Journal, they used to call them the page one gods because the page one editors would determine whether you ever made it to the front page. They would determine, you know, your success when you'd have your reviews. It was all about kind of were you on page one, how many times you're on page one. If you're not on page one, it's great to be on the front page, but does it matter? You could have a huge following on YouTube or you could have it on um, some other, on Twitter. Um, so I think that that power structure has definitely changed and also the kind of the powers that be can't ignore Twitter, they can't ignore Facebook, they can't ignore like what following you have that may never have anything to do with page one. I mean a lot of stuff that I did on um, real estate, it doesn't really make page one, but if you write anything about real estate in New York, it just does so well. It kind of like explodes and takes off. Do you still feel a journalism degree is helpful in entering the field? And can you comment on the health of the journalism field in the era of digital news? Um, is a journalism degree helpful? I think that any skills you can get before you come into a newspaper or news organization are helpful because news, news organizations have dwindled in their resources. So um, if you came to the New York Times today, there wouldn't be anyone with a spare moment to sit down and say like, hey, this is how you write a news story. I don't know if that happened many years ago, but, and it, it's nothing personal, it's just we're all stretched much more thin. I mean, in the last five years, my byline count has more than tripled. Um, so, and then I'm also doing a lot more social media. So if you can get these skills elsewhere, that's also very helpful. In my case, I got that at a small paper in Alabama. In your case, that might be a journalism program, getting really great clips at a strong newspaper. Um, the journalism industry, um, parts of it are very unhealthy. But I don't know if I can speak to digital being that way. You know, Politico seems to have taken off. Um, there, you know, Yahoo News, there are groups that are doing, seem to be doing well. There's also a lot of tech money being poured into um, media right now. You know, you have one of the co-founders of Facebook buying up the New Republic. You have Jeff Bezos of Amazon buying the Washington Post. You have a lot of kind of infusion of cash coming in right now. If you could offer one piece of advice to use as college students, what would it be? I think it would be just to be open. Um, you know, I remember when I was starting out doing my job search, people would say like, what do you want to be? You know, tell me what you want your job title to be. And it's like, oh, do I want to be a columnist for Newsweek? Like, <laughs> well, Newsweek doesn't exist. It, well, it does exist, but it's, you know, it was sold for a dollar and it's rapidly diminished. I would just be open to all the different types of things you can do in media and think really big because the way you're going to be consuming media five years from now is completely different from the way it was five years ago. So, and I'd also kind of be really open to topics you wouldn't have necessarily thought of. So, like in my case, real estate. Um, in my case, covering breaking news for the Washington Post. These are things that I was actually kind of discouraged from doing, and they turned into these wonderful, wonderful opportunities. How has the rise of social media sites changed the nature of the journalism field? Um, the wonderful thing is it's kind of altered the power structure. One of the drawbacks is that there's a lot more pressure to kind of respond to breaking news. So you have like the rise of places like Politico. Politico will be writing smaller news stories three times a day. So I'll be working on a longer project. There's definitely more pressure for institutions like the New York Times to respond to these smaller items, whether it's a job change, whether it's X, whether it's Y. So that can kind of distort things. What are some of the major difficulties, difficulties you have faced as a journalist? Currently, I think the balance is between 
competing with social media and also doing things that are um, why we actually went into this field in the long term. You know, um, there are times where we've had quite a bit of pressure like, oh, social media says X, you need to respond to that. Um, there's also pressure, uh, I was on the story this weekend about Bloomberg and other people were reporting there were layoffs at Bloomberg, that someone had been fired from Bloomberg. Well, um, we often at the times we will be much more cautious and we won't break the news, but we won't go with the news until it's actually, we can confirm it's accurate and we can stand by it. So that's something that's kind of, we're dealing with right now. Um, yeah, that's kind of a big thing. And then also, I guess the longer term issue is, you know, um, like I've sent, uh, at least two of my sources have gone to prison for my reporting. So if you're gonna really kind of dig into something and do something that is meaningful, you can't be doing social media, you can't be responding to every single thing that social media says. You kind of have to rise above it and be focusing on these bigger stories. That's harder to do when there's a lot of pressure from social media. How did your job as a journalist for so long change your personal life? Um, it's interesting because it is kind of like a 24-7 job now. Um, but it's, well, because I'm like eight months pregnant. <laughs> it's interesting to go through pregnancy and journalism because there's this like urgency to get to news and then when you're thinking about these bigger things like life and a baby, you it's just kind of been wonderfully altering of um, what what is news and what really matters and what's like the best resources for me to kind of give to the times. Do you think your pregnancy will affect your journalism path in the near future? <clears throat> well, I'm older, so <laughs> um, I guess it'll affect it, but I think probably in a good way. You know, I'm like 40 and having, we're having our first baby. So it's just kind of like a cherry on top of a, of a good life, you know. Um, but uh, it does make you kind of look at life, I guess, differently. So, um, I mean, I was pregnant with twins and I miscarried a twin and still was getting on the front page through the last six months. And so you kind of think like, well, just what really matters and what matters that social media says and what are like the stories that matter and what do you kind of want your legacy to be, so. Do you like what you do today and um, how does it affect you as being a woman? Um, I really like what I do today. You know, I covered real estate for so long and that was a very male dominated field and there's like a lot more women and it's cool to have like women mentors and role models. So I love covering a beat where there's women who are like successful and changing an industry. Covering transportation, there were like no women. You know, <laughs> if you look at like the media, the, the real estate moguls of New York City, there aren't a lot of women. So I feel it's kind of really inspiring. Um, how has the rise of social media sites changed the nature of the journalism field? The ri um, well, it's made it more, there's more news out there. It's more competitive, but I don't know if the quality is better. Like, I don't know if you would agree in this room, like is there, are you getting better journalism because there's so much more out there or is there just kind of more noise? Um, it's kind of a, a combination. But it is a much more de de democratic type of um, experience, so. Well, thank you for joining us today and thank you, Ms. Honey. Thank you.